Welcome everyone, my name is Sudeji, so any questions that you have, just, just ask. I'm going to give you a lot of information at once, so you can interrupt me and ask what you want to know, okay? So let's start with the view of the property. So the first line of horizon belongs to this big property. We have here 1,800 hectares. Uh, so it is a big property. If you also can see that uh, 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 an hectare is a, a soccer field. So you can have here 1,800 uh, football field, soccer fields here. But not all is with vineyard, not all is with uh, olive trees, olive grove. So near of us we have uh, our vineyard. We, you, can, you saw many of the vineyards coming here to the wine tourism. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So we have here planted 400 hectares of vineyard. Okay? So we have these 400 hectares. If Peron decided to increase their production, increase our production, so we decide to buy another property that is in the other side of the city near of us, that is called uh, Herdade dos Perdigões. This property, uh, there was no vineyard there. It was necessary to prepare the terrain, everything, to plant new vineyard there. And in a some area of the Herdade dos Perdigões, we were passing with a tractor and we saw artifacts in the soils, in the earth. So we stopped immediately the preparation of the terrain to plant vineyards and these artifacts date from the Neolithic and Cocolithic period. So we stop immediately the preparation of the terrain and that area precisely have been studied by different universities year, year after year and we are finding a lot of information and a lot of data uh, that are a little bit uh, making a revolution uh, for what we know from this era. So we decided to just let that area to the archaeologists and the rest of the property is 200 hectares of vineyard. 200 hectares there, 400 here, so it's a total uh, of 600 hectares of vineyard. We plant our vineyard by grape type, and you can see indication over there. What is the grape type that we plant here? Do you see an indication there? In the white, uh, yes. you saw? Yes. So that is indication what kind of, of uh, what grape type we have here um, in this area. And also allow us, because we do this organization, allow us to treat that plant, that specific grape type uh, more careful. So if that, for example, that grape type requires a lot of water, allow us to just, uh, with, our, with our technology, just to irrigate more that, that vineyard, for example. So this allows us to increase our quality in, in case of grape type, okay? So we have here the vineyard. Then over there, do you see that lines over there? Yeah. You see in the property over there? Mm -hmm. That lines it is our olive grove. Over there we have 82 hectares of olive trees and the production that we have in that 82 hectares it is organic production. So it is for the second time that Espuron launched to the market an olive oil that is organic made by the, this uh, 82 hectares. Espuron also buys a lot of olives from local producers and also the production of olive oil it's not made here in this property is made in Serpa, where we have the building suitable, prepared to produce olive oils, okay? So, we have olive grove there, and then we have this lake. This lake doesn't belong to a big lake that is nearby, that is called um, Big Lake Ocliva. This is uh, a lake separate from that one. This was made by the, this company. Uh, this, this lake takes us one, uh, take, uh, from the property 1, 000, uh, 120 hectares, sorry, one, 120 hectares. And this lake is here because we need a lot of water. So we require uh, and we demand a lot of water for the vineyard and also for the olive grove. So it was necessary to have this lake here. This lake, uh, uh, the, the water that we are seeing here, comes from a small river that is called Ribeira da Caridad. The river uh, already passed in here. So what we did, it was construct a limit over there, a dam, a small dam near the olive grove which allows to have the water here all year and to irrigate the, the vineyard and also the olive grove, okay? Then Espuron decided to not plant uh, all the property, that 1,800 hectares of vineyard to reduce the big environmental impact of this company. So what we, do, we did, it was to let a big part of the property with the typical Mediterranean forest. So you can see surrounding the lake over there, and you can see between that olive grove and this vineyard, you can see many trees in here. So this is the typical Mediterranean forest of this region. We can call it Montado Lentian. This is the typical forest uh, of this region. And what we did, uh, letting the property like this, it is to reduce the environmental impact, the big environmental impact that we already have. So we decided to have this Montado in this property. What have been happening? Uh, it is this Montado and this big lake that we have here. 
they are um, catching some species. I don't know if you saw that exposition that we exhibition that we have there mm -hmm. in the entry. That is a lot of photographs with different species. And what is happening is that we have a lot of animals here, a lot of species. Uh, so we have a lot of that is that is a big ecosystem here in this property. And this is ecosystem. It is for help, for example, helping us with the vineyard because it's for example is balancing the number of insects that would turn a big number and will damage our production. So there is a natural balance in here because of this ecosystem that we already have here. So if Puron don't use any pesticides or herbicides because we don't need, uh, because this nature is doing that work for us. So we are helping the nature, having a lot of the property with the typical Mediterranean forest, but also the nature is helping us balancing this number naturally. Okay, so if Puron don't use any chemicals at all. Okay. So what we're going to do in this tour is going to be the path of the grape. So we start theoretically in the in the vineyard. Now we're going to the pass to the wineries. We're also going to see where we are bottling our wine, and also where the where it is the wine cellars and the, the tunnel of the bells where the wine is staging. Okay. So as you can see, I give a lot of information, so you can interrupt me when you want. So let's go. So we have a test there, oh. and you can taste uh, the grape. This is the same grape, mm -hmm. the grape made with organic practice and uh, integrate practice, and you can see the difference very easily. Normally, the organic, uh, and we are seeing this, and in our case, well, the integrate production have uh, a little bit more flavor, and we are seeing this uh, than the, the organic one. So it's, it is different. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Yes. That, that house belongs to one of the founders of the company. It is the house of the family. It is mm -hmm. Mr. José Ruquet, one of the founders. Oh, For short, over there, the, the house uh, for, for him to stay here. Same lake like you saw in the other side. Okay? In here, we have some new olive trees. Yes. So this is olive trees. At the Red Wines Winery. It's here where we produce the red wines. This was the first winery of Fespural. Uh, it was constructed in 1987. At first, it was one of the more modern ones in, in Portugal. Right now, it isn't. Uh, also, because it was the first winery, we start to make all different kinds of wine here. But because we are dealing with different kinds of production to, to make different kinds of wine, we decided to make this one the red wines. We construct another one that is behind this one that is called the white wines winery and then we have this building here that looks like a storage area that is the winery of Lagarde. Okay? So this this area is it's, uh, it's a little bit stopped because as you can see in the vineyard we don't have fruits uh, right now. What we only have it is some leaves. So this part of receiving the grapes and that and start the process of fermentation it's, it's stopped as you can see. So what you are seeing here, and I'm going to try to give an idea what is normally happening in the summer. In the summer it is our harvest, okay? So in here that you are seeing here, these two are very similar. This is where we receive the grapes. In here, in this area it's where the tractors uh, move, and in here it's where we receive the grapes. The grapes arrive here by grape type, okay? And practically all the process is going to be by grape type, only in the, practically in the end that is time to blend them. So in here they arrive by grape type and they arrive the total part. It's still the, the grape attached to the stir, to the branches, okay? So it is a total part. So it's arrived here, then that we are seeing here, this turns and push the grapes over there, to that entry. In that entry we have a machine that is called in Portuguese Dengasador. What this machine does, it's the separation of the stern, the branches of the grape itself, the fruit. So the stern we don't need to this process, so we put in a ramp. You are seeing over there that ramp? Yes. Over there? Mm -hmm. That is where the stern is it's, it's put. And we also collect that stern over there. 
uh, because after the process of smashing and dehydration, let's say like this, um, it's going to use biofertilizer to, to fertilize the vineyard and also the olive grove. The, the grapes, that's what we want to produce the wines. So go to that stainless steel tanks to start the process of fermentation. Okay? So in here we have the, the, the called uh, alcoholic fermentation. That is basically the transformation of the sugar of the grape in alcohol and dioxide carbon. Okay? So over there, that machine that we are seeing here in this stainless steel, over there again you can see this machine that is above this stainless steel, it is our machine that smash mechanically the grapes. So that metallical parts under this square, it is what goes down, smash the grapes and extract the juice and this turn uh, and start the process of fermentation. Okay? Why is that we do in this winery? Maybe, I don't know if you know our brands. It is Montevelho, Tefesa, Alandra, they all made here. Um, and practically they don't have, uh, they don't have stage in oak, so they practically do all the, the stage and everything in this area in stainless steel. Okay? In here, it's where we arrive the grapes that are going to be a reserve and also um, uh, quatre castas. But because this is wine that's staged in oak, they are removed from this area to stage in an oak barrel, and then they blend and they get bottled. Okay. Steel tanks that we are seeing here, it is where we blend them. Okay. So anyone. Uh, Wants to guess how many liters that you can fit in each one? No. What do you get? What do you think? One count. Three liters. In liters. In liters. In liters. Ah. How uh, many uh, liters uh, do you think that you can fit in one? In one of these? Ten million. Ten, ten million. Ten million liters. Ten thousand. Thirty thousand. Ten thousand. Thirty. We already have guests. I don't know if you want more or less. Fifty thousand. Fifty thousand. Anyone wants to try more? Five hundred thousand. So in each one you have 120,000 liters in each one, okay? So this is where we blend them. So we treat and do the process of fermentation by grape type and here it's where we blend them. And in some cases because the wine don't stage uh, for, for very long, so what we do is to connect that AZ over there uh, to the bottling area and it's where we are doing right now, it is bottling our wine, okay? Well, the number that I'm going to give, give you change a little bit, but it's between 9 to 11 million liters of wine. Okay, it is a big number. <laughs> so let me show you this. We arrive at the winery of Lagarge. Do you know what Lagarge mean? No. no? Lagarge, it's this central part in marble, where we still do that traditional way of smashing the grapes with our feet. That traditional way, we still do this. And also, we do this for the best wine that we produce, for the premium. Which means that is over there where we do the private selection and talk. The premium wine that, that is from produced. Why we still have this process and not with the machine? It's because this process is considered better uh, to produce wine. Why? Because when, when the grapes are over there and we are smashing uh, the grapes with our feet, the curves and also the skin of our feet don't smash the seed, that small seed. And all of us already bite the seed and it's not a very good taste. The characteristics of the seed they pass to the wine if you smash that small seed. So this process is considered better if you compare with the machine because the machine is more aggressive, doesn't have sensibility, so there is a, more, a higher probability of smashing that small seed and that characteristic pass to the wine. So this process is considered better. So that's why you still have these lagars over here. So this is where we produce the best brands of fish brown, but as you can see, it is the smaller production of fish brown because we only have this lagarge, and also these two brands we only produce when we have the quality or the quantity enough, so it's not every year. So it's here where we do that, that smash uh, with our feet. Then the process of fermentation occurs over there, and then we connect that, uh, that two valves that are under over there to a pressing machine, and then we connect them to the barrel that you are seeing here. I will talk more about the barrels. Down there, where we have the tunnel of the barrel that is 70 meters where we are right now, under where we are, okay? So we have over there at least 1,500 barrels, so it is the place to talk a little bit more about it, okay? If you have any questions, just... Big tallas. We call it in Portuguese tallas, but I believe you can call it amphoras. So this is a, a way that the Roman Empire brought to the Iberian Peninsula. So this is how the Romans did their wine. 
as we can see these tires because of that, that fact in all over the Mediterranean in Spain, Italy, Greece but in less quantity in Portugal these tires uh, and this tradition of making wine stay even nowadays so there is still wine producer that produce wine like this but is in more rural areas uh, and also the people who produce this kind of wine are getting old and they are not passing the knowledge to the young generation so it is a tradition that is being lost so Espural decided to start to produce wine like this 2013 it was the first year that we tried this uh, so we don't have quality so we don't have quality and quantity enough but maybe in the future we're going to have quality and a brand of this kind of wine. So right now it's not being sold, it's just an experiment. We are studying more a little bit about this wine. So we have five here and we also experiment year after year uh, but it's not being sold. There is no brand at all right now but maybe in the future. Okay? So while I was talking, I don't know if you noticed the roof. Yes. yes. You noticed? Yes. So this is made of uh, wood from the oak barrel. So it is the outside of the oak. So this is just, just decorative. It has a lot of curves, look like a wave. It's because the, the wood is already curved, it's already forced. And make this decoration. This is just decorative. It doesn't have any practical use for the wine. It can be di totally different. Just a different use of, of the barrels, okay? And also the gate. The gate is also made of the, of the wood of the barrels. The wood of the bells, it's only two different kinds of oak. It is French oak or American oak. We only use this, these two different kinds of oak, okay? Because of the flavor that brings to the wine. But I'll talk more about that, okay? okay. Any questions? No. no? So let's go. It is a smaller thing. It is small, not much. Yes. So now I'm going this way. Boris, this is a place to be. Yes, that's paradise. 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 Yeah, you know, I have to.
can see. Take six bottles, then put a thousand box under, and the box is ready, okay? Then go near to that yellow robot over there, that looks cool like a yellow crane, over there, in the bottom of the room. That robot it is a, a constructor of pellets. So that robot, what it does, it's when it fills 25 boxes over there, it's going to pick them up and put in a pellet, okay? When the pellet is ready, the pellet starts moving, then you put the plastic in the pellet, over there in the uh, machine that has a white door, and then the pellet moves their own, as you can see over there, the pellet moving down over there, and wait over there near that one, over there. And over there is really where you have a man with a machine to pick that pellet up and organize behind those walls. Behind those walls you see our storage area, that extends to outside, outside is where the trucks come, Let's do the pellet and the, the wine go to the market, okay? So what we are seeing here is a young wine that is called Motivated. Mm -hmm. We have here a line that is not working right now. You can see the thousand box over there. Mm -hmm. That is our more manual uh, packing area. So what we have there is for the example the superior wine that we produce, for example the reserve. That box is from the reserve. The reserve, it is the wine that stays in a barrel. And after that we blend them, but it is a wine that is not ready for the market, so it stays also in the bottle. And that stage occurs in the wine cell that we're going to see next. Only after that stage, we're going to pick that bottle up, and we're going to pick, and we're going to pick them here, and in here so we pack them by hand. Okay? This is a more manual work, and then the cost of production is going to increase the final price, and that's why there is a, a, different, a, a different price. Okay? When you see the dados por 1267 1267, it is the year of this property, of this state, the Adados Purão. So, the limits of this property have been established here since 1267. So, it is an old property. But in case of uh, wine and production of wine, this project only started in 1973, a more modern year. So, in 1973, this, process, this project started uh, with, when we bought this property. So, we bought this property. To produce wine in Alentejo, it was something that was a little bit visionary because in Alentejo, with so many hectares, was normal uh, production of cereal. So it is a very big production of cereal in this region. And in Douro, it was more known for their wines. So they decided to buy this property. Mr. José Roquete and Mr. Joaquim Bandeira, two partners, decided to buy this property to produce wine in Alentejo. So they bought this property in 1973, but in 1974 there was a revolution in Portugal which bring uh, uh, to end of the regime, that was a fascist regime that we had, uh, and because of this in Alentejo there was called Algerian reform. This was uh, an idea of the time that was a man could not own so much land, and because of this fact this property was nationalized. So there was no wine produced in 1972 or 1974. So it was only possible to, to have this property back in 1984, in 1985, it is the year that we sold the first wine that we produced. So, 1985. Since this uh, first bottle, we tried to connect art with wine. And because of this fact, since the first bottle that we produced, we invite a different artist year after year to make our labels. So, it is very normal to see, for example, a reserve or a private selection with, a, with you know, uh, uh, one year have uh, a label with a... With let's say with some colors, the other it's the uh, same private selection of the reserve with a total different completely label. It is a nightmare for the marketing team. But it is a tradition that we, we kept even nowadays. Okay? So now I'm going to show you what we have in the, the rest of the wine cellars. Because we have a total absence of oxygen over there. Because over there inside of test bottles we already put wine, nitrogen and we seal it with the core. Okay? So there is a total absence of oxygen inside of this. And what this makes to the wine, it is gaining new flavors. Uh, it's also changing the color. So the wine, when uh, staging a barrel, stage here, 
uh, normal, when they start that stage, it is a red ruby. When it finishes this stage, uh, normally it is a red, brownish, or a dark red. It's because this stage is also influenced the color of the wine. And also the wine that stage in a barrel and stage in a, in a bottle, in case of our company, it is a wine that you can store it for 12, 15, 17 years. It is a good wine to age. If there is, for example, a Montevallo, a brand that we saw over there, that is called a young wine, what we want in that wine it is fruity flavors. And that fruit goes away, disappearing in the wine, after five, six years. So in that case of that wine, uh, more recent it is, uh, better. In this case, more old, normally it's with a higher quality. Okay, so the wine of Montevallo, you can store it for five, six years. So if you drink after that, the wine is not going to be bad for you. What happens is it doesn't have that intense fruity flavor that should have if you open the bottle in the first or the second year. In this case, it's going to increase the intensity of the flavor that you have here. Okay? So, uh, if you want to have uh, a bottle 2H in our wine cellars, in our basement, we recommend to have a conditions very similar to this wine cellar that you have here. So, I'm going to give you the, the recommendation and then uh, you use as, as you want this recommendation. So, if you have a bottle that we know that you can store it for 15 years, 12 years, uh, whatever, so we recommend if you stage to have the bottle in horizontal position. Why? Because in our case we only use cork, and what the cork is doing, because the bottle is like this, the wine is in contact with the, uh, with the cork, and what the cork is doing is absorbing a little bit of wine and it's expanding. This makes that the oxygen don't enter and the nitrogen don't, don't, don't go out. So the, the bottle is stable. If you start a bottle like this in a vertical position for 15 years, the cork is going to dry and it's going to shrink and let the oxygen in. So the wine oxidates and you are losing value. So we recommend if you stage, uh, have the bottle like this in horizontal position, in a low light environment, as you can see in here, so there is a low light because the light also influences a little bit the wine. Uh, and also, in a cold or fresh place. Normally a basement or wine cellar is like this. In here we are having temperature between 14 to 16 degrees. Okay? So this is the perfect condition to store a wine like this. Okay? So now we are going to the tunnel of the barrels. Oh my god. This is beautiful. Right now we are 70 meters, not 30, that we were over there, 30, and here are 70 meters from the wine to reach. 10 to 7? 17, 17, 17. 3. No, no. 3. So, inside of this we have a single grape variety, it's because some grapes uh, they, they get more aroma, more flavors. Being in a French oak barrel, some uh, they gain more value if they stage in American oak uh, barrel. So because of this fact, what we do at this point, we don't blend them yet, only after this stage. So we have, in each one we have 225 liters of a single grape variety. Okay? But many of these bells are going to be a blend. So we are dealing here with the reserve, for example. Over there we have 20, 225 liters. In here we call it balseiros. And because of this we have a capacity of 5,000 liters in each one. So in here we, it's where we do the single grape variety wines. Wines that only have a single grape type. Over there we have the wines that have a lot of different grape types. Okay? This stage in a oak barrel can last between 6 to 18 months. It depends on the brand that we want to produce. For example, we call it a Forecasters, a wine that we have a brand. Forecasters is considered a young wine, but have a lot of, uh, it is a body shaped wine because stage here inside of this barrel 6 months. A reserve, our reserve, stays here 12 months. A Guerra Feira that is a private selection, it is our premium right now that we are selling the shop, stays here 18 months. So it depends a little bit the, 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 the brand that we want to produce, okay? So now the wood is not a dark wood. It's because we only use these spells four years. So these spells are all staying here for four years. 
It's because after that four years, the winemakers of the company, they say that the flavors of this oak is extinct for this kind of wine that we produce here. So after that four years, this is sold. Some, some, they are sold to different companies, as whiskeys, to produce brandies, cognacs. Some of these, well, they go to a property that we have in the north. So it's Curão, we have this property in Alentejo, but also have a property in the north, in Douro, where we produce, for example, Porto wine. Porto wine can still use these spells after that four years. So many of these spells, they go there to produce Porto wine. The others go to a production of vinegar. So production of vinegar, of Curão, pass to this use bells, for example. And the rest are sold to different companies, as you can, can and see. So we buy these barrels from these companies. So this is a company who made them. This is a Spanish company. This is a Portuguese company over there. Peugeot de Dias. Um, so this is where we buy them. This is our brand, Herdado Pronto 1267. And then in here it is the characteristics of the barrel. This is, I believe, it's from 2011. Uh, and this is some characteristics of the bell for the toast, for the, the kind of oak, so it depends each one, okay? So now I'm going this way. So let's start the wine tasting, okay? So the first wine that we're going to taste it is called Vinha de Feza White. It has three different grape types in it, so it is a blend. And we only use Portuguese grape types. Portugal it is the second country with more native grapes. I think the first is France and the second is Portugal. And what we have here is a Rinto, a Tomás and a Pale. All Portuguese names, I'm sorry. And what we have here is grapes that they were already here in the late some we brought from the north of Portugal. And what we're going to taste is the flavors of the grapes, and we're also going to taste the, the behavior of this plant, of this grape, in the late that is considered a dry, hot region. Okay? So I'm going to start serve, and then I ask you can take your glasses, okay? So. You can come. So. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I, I have a degree of the Academy of Wine, but only basic state. Yes. I, I must uh, learn. Upgrade, upgrade. Yes. You can take your glass. Uh, I need to make your hand. So you can take your glass to taste. So do you already smell it? What do you feel? Maybe. Should be. <laughs> Should be um, more peachy, more lime. Which one you felt? So it's correct. Uh, so that is the, 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 the smell that we can, we can uh, identify. So when you take it, you feel that it's a fresh wine. Have a little bit of acidity. So this is a fresh wine. Um, it is a wine that we are serving this in a temperature of 10 degrees. But this is recommended if you drink it at 12 degrees. It's a fresh wine. Uh, it's big, the difference of the temperature is because the temperature of the, the fridge that we have over there, the wine for serving, it's different from the, the temperature suitable to serve. So they, they, but when I serve it, this we can be present. So you have a wine that doesn't require food, you can taste it like this. Uh, it is a very good wine, just for example, uh, there is someone or people who enjoy cooking. For a dinner, to have a white wine. It's a good wine for that because it doesn't require food. And also, it's a good wine, for example, for um, seafood, for example, it is a good wine for that. Okay? Uh, this is a young wine, and what we have over there. Okay? Yeah. No, 
I'm not saying he found off. Mm. We still put three. Yeah. 